Welcome to my May 2017 haul video. I've got everything here from Hot Wheels, Greenlight, M2, Tommy, and even some off-brand stuff like Tamika, Corgi, Yatming. Vintage and new, mostly new stuff. All the Greenlight stuff you're going to see here is brand new. As are these convention pieces and Kmart mail-away trucks. We're going to take a close look at those. Some vintage stuff that I picked up. Exclusive Toys R Us finds and a couple other little pieces here and there we'll get into as well as the brand new V-Dub Series 4 from Greenlight. This has to be the best V-Dub Series I've seen yet. Look at all those cool vehicles. We're going to get them all opened up. An Elvis car from the Hollywood Series, the latest one. I didn't get the full set, but let's open that up. A cool Foos designed John Deere tractor from Ertl. And some nice M2 vans and a station wagon. Jeeps galore. We've got lots of Jeeps. U.S. Army exclusives from Greenlight. I've already got two of those opened up. The most exciting thing so far for me is this Heavy Duty Series 8 ramp truck. Which, look at this one. It's got a blue cab. I thought I had a red cab. Well, we'll look at that. I'm sure you've already figured it out based on the truck behind it few running on empty, some extras I need to pick up because last time I picked up a case I got a green machine in there of this Dodge D100 so I'll open up this regular version the Shasta is going to stay in its package but we'll take a look at it and at long last I'm going to crack out that Ecto-1 and Ecto-2 for a loose review in 1998 these 1980s Camaro castings from Hot Wheels were released in 10 packs exclusive to Toys R Us they are very difficult to find. I managed to pick up my second set now. This one was a complete set. The first time I had to piece it together, spending literally a lot of money. This one sent me back $100 for these three cars with shipping, but it's well worth it because I've seen and I've paid that for that green car $100 on its own in the past, if not more. So that was a pretty cool addition to find. And uh, also, at the same time, from the same seller, I managed to pick up these two 32 Ford deliveries, also Toys R Us 10 car exclusives from 1998. I had the white one, but I did not have the green one, which is the slightly harder to find. Not nearly as valuable as the Camaros, though. The random vintage car of this month is an 82 Supra from a Stow and Go playset circa 1996. I needed a nice newer version of mine because the one I had had some chips and the windows were very yellow. In the background, shifting gears here, I've got a Yatming Chevy Chevette with opening doors. Pretty neat little casting. Behind that, a Volkswagen Golf from Tamika. This is a vintage piece. Nice little car, also opening doors. And beyond that, a 1980s release Corgi Volkswagen Golf with opening doors. Just spun these cars around for you. We'll take one last look at them from the back with the doors open. Check out those details on some of these cars. Beautiful details, lots of nice interior parts and awesome opening doors. Love the cars, the opening doors. There's the Supra with an all metal black base and the deliveries, the seven spoke white line tires, the tri blades on these Camaros featuring all metal bases as well and interesting blue interiors. I love picking me up some conventions and mail away cars when I can. They're pretty much impossible to get here naturally in Canada so I have to buy them all on eBay. But I'm a big fan of the Texas Drive em, and so I had to pick up this 30th annual Hot Wheels Collectors Convention Los Angeles version. These are limited in production. We'll flip them around in a second to find out. One's 2600 and one's 2800 pieces worldwide. Here we have the 17th annual Collectors Nationals from Pittsburgh, April 5th to the 9th, 2017. Look at the details on this one in particular. Painted motorcycles in the back, some sick flames on the side. Loving those new real rider rims that they've put on the Texas Drive. I'm not sure we've seen those particular real rider rims on this vehicle before. And this one is not limited by a uh, holographic number on the back as far as production. But it is a Kmart mail away, and I'm also just a fan of these Toyota pickups big time. So, 1987 Toyota pickup, had to pick that one up. 
and it looks tremendously awesome with these yellow stripes and Hot Wheel logo on it, racing decorations, and all those painted fog lights and details. This truck here is limited to 2,600 pieces up there. This one is number 836. Number three in a series of four vehicles made to commemorate the 30th annual Hot Wheels Collectors Nationals. I don't open these ones up, but I do display them right on my wall. And the packaging is pretty cool. I feel that these vehicles only go up in value over time. And in many instances, when I've bought these types of vehicles in the past, certainly of popular models such as the Texas Drive them, they do tend to go up in value. Right now, that one's going for about $50 online on eBay. Not sure what they would have cost at the convention or if you just got them for free. I have yet to go to a convention. It's on my bucket list. And now let's take a closer look at this one. First, how many is it limited to? 2800, number 2792. Pretty cool. Number three in a series of four as well. I only collect what I like, that's why I only got these particular trucks. I think the whole series runs you about $200 on eBay right now, which is a lot of money. But uh, I spent about 50 or 60 bucks for this one as well. And with such a limited production run and such a popular casting, I know this one's going to go up in value over time. So, not that I'm so much worried about value, but uh, it's just, it's you can spend that money knowing it's an investment as well as part of your collection. And here we have the Zamac edition, 2017. This one does not have the holographic uh, numbering as far as production on it. Does have a little bit of information there. You can pause on that if you want to read about it. But check out all the details on this truck. It is sweet. Just before we get into these cool trucks, let's take out our last Hot Wheels. The Ecto-1 and Ecto-2. I've had this one in the package for a while. It's not exactly new. Um, they're not overly valuable at this point. They're, I think they made so many of them that uh, you could pick these up pretty cheap. Actually, look at that. The package opens up quite nicely without even tearing anything. The glue has let go. Which is perfect for me because now I can actually save that packaging just for fun. But I really wanted to get this big old 80s Cadillac. It's a heavy piece out of the packaging. Let's see if we can focus on this thing. Look at all the details for a Hot Wheels. This is impressive. Love the amber cherry on the top. Very detailed equipment rack. Light bar. Superb tampos. And of course, real rider tires, all metal base. That one is fit for display. And let's not forget about the Ecto-2. Seems to have uh, some sort of extra part here. Must be the stand. <laughs> Look at those uh, ghost-busting guns on the front of it. Again, lots of detail. And a nice motorcycle, actually. Very nice motorcycle. Really like those wheels. Of course, the scale doesn't fit my collection, but as a Hot Wheel, it's uh, quite a nice all-metal piece. It's quite heavy for a little motorcycle. And it comes with that nifty little stand. Make way for the Heavy Duty Series 8 ramp truck. This it was a highly anticipated piece for me, especially. I love this casting of the Ford. Here they have the Ford F-350 with this brand new ramp truck on the back, or the ramp piece. Comes with a little exclusive Cobra, and uh, those ramps fold up nicely. So we're going to get that one out of the package here for you, before I show you my custom piece. And just before we do open it up, this is a series of three vehicles. We've already seen that Winnebago, I've shown that one in videos prior. And I have not purchased this Bounder yet, but I guess it's on my list now. So, I'm not sure if these vehicles all came out at the same time. I don't think they did. For some reason, Series 8 was staggered, because that one came out a long time ago, and I've just picked this one up now as soon as I possibly could. And I think this one came out about the same time as this one, or maybe in between these two. Not really sure. At any rate, not sure why Greenlight staggered the release of those vehicles, but sometimes they do do that, I've noticed lately. 
For 10 or $11, this little truck has tremendous details. First, I'll just demonstrate how it works. A little Cobra can roll right up on the back of it. And the ramps fold up nicely to secure the car in place. It's got an opening hood. Revealing a nice little blue engine in there, or I should say a big engine. First we'll just take a quick peek at the Cobra. It's a basically a fairly simple green light. Whoa! It's got a plastic base on it. Rubber tires though, and beautiful details as far as all the chrome little bumpers go and lots of little doodads on that, so it's a really nice piece. But the truck is the prize in my opinion. Check out all those details. The headlights and the signal lights. True rubber dualies on it. It does have a plastic base, so it's not the heaviest vehicle in the world. But it's got these really nice little rails, plastic rails on the back. Winch and work lights on the headache rack. The ramp itself is metal. And these little uh, ramp extensions are plastic, but they fold up very nicely. It's got the oversized towing mirrors on it. And I've already taken the liberty of doing a little custom on this truck. I intend to buy a lot of these things because I really like them and I think they'd be great for custom. So let's take a zoom in on this little critter. Here I've got the blue cab from the Running on Empty series, which we reviewed in a video not too long ago. Basically, I just drilled out the rivets on this thing. Three little rivets. Quite easy to drill out. And what's that on the back? That's... Uh, that's the body of my Tommy International Scout, which I've just, we'll get to that in a second. Anyways, here it is, and a very interchangeable truck with all the other parts. You can see it's got three rivets I drilled out. So you can take the ramp right off. You're left with a nice big long flatbed. And of course you can take the cab off as well. Pretty cool. So this ramp you could probably use on a lot of different vehicles. I'd like to experiment with some other running on empty trucks, including this good old Dodge here. It is a Dodge, yeah, Dodge D100. So imagine putting the cab from this truck onto the ramp truck and uh, color matching it all. It would look pretty cool, I think. Switch out some wheels, perhaps. And just for giggles, I switched the box on this running on empty truck and just put the cab from this one onto the running on empty chassis, which is all metal. You can see right there, it's pretty straightforward as well. You've got two more little rivets holding the box to the cab, which you just drill out carefully. And uh, away you go. You've got a plenty of parts here. You can tow around with your other functional ramp trucks. Now just getting back quickly since I mentioned it, I had this, uh, found this at a local farm store, a bunch of them were on sale so I picked up a handful of them. The old International Scout, it's actually a Johnny Lightning casting but uh, titled Tommy, this one's got a big plastic suspension lift on it, lots of detail and rubber tires. I was watching a video from Sick Diecast who makes some awesome customs out there and uh, he was demonstrating how you can remove these wheels with uh, some special in-house techniques of his. I chose just to pry off the entire chassis here for this video and for really no reason other than I wanted a, an old wreck on the back of my my ramp truck here and with the suspension it just looks a little bit too big for the road you know drive right up and over it. So future customs there at some point when I find the time and as I was unable to open my last running on empty here it is with the uh, regular rims without the green machine treatment. Very nice big heavy truck. Very detailed of course as I would expect from Greenlight. Really cool stuff that came out this past month or two was these US Army exclusives. Let me get some room here. They come with an oversized Army figure for unknown reasons. Just, just for fun I suppose. And you got a little blurb on there you can pause and read about if you like. So two came out in this series. Also this really cool newer JK Jeep. But check out the wheels they put on it this time. Nice steely wheels. 
if nothing else, buy that for those wheels because those will look great on a lot of customs. And I've already taken the liberty of opening up these vehicles for you. So here we have the Jeep. It's basically a stripped down version for military use. USA license plate. Get five of those cool wheels and tires. All metal with a painted base. Pretty cool. And of course the 67 Ford Custom, one of my favorite castings. Love the big old four doors. And those deep dish rims look really good on it. It's got a very flat military green. And another detailed engine of course under the hood. So a really cool car. Bought a couple of those. And one of the random uh, anniversary vehicles, 10th anniversary edition. If we can just zoom out here for a second. I didn't buy the whole series. There's quite a few cool cars that came out in this set. Uh, there's a bunch of information about the Jeep on the back. But we'll open that one up presently. And there you have it. Very capable looking Jeep with a ton of details. Nice red interior on it. Removable soft top roof. Full size spare. And check out those little recovery hooks painted red on the back. Really cool Jeep. Pretty much pick up all the little Jeeps that I can from Greenlight. And what do we have next? We're gonna switch gears again. We're gonna look at that Ertl tractor. I just picked this up randomly because I thought it was so cool. Um, Foose designed. Pretty cool. You can read about that there. 1970 4020. One of the most recognizable John Deere tractors ever produced. Not in this uh, not in this way though. Let's let's check that one out. Cool. Check that out. This is 164 scale. Really nicely detailed. Got the, the deer logo on the on the roof. Nice painted little metal seat there. And all rubber tires. So I do have a few tractors in my collection, and I just thought that would fit in real nice. Let's put that on the old ramp truck. That looks fitting. Very nice. Another favorite car of mine from Greenlight is this 55 Cadillac Fleetwood Series 60. Here we have it in the Hollywood Series 16. I didn't get the whole series of this either. There's still a few that I'd like to pick up, but I'm hoping to find them in the wild. I did order this one because I just couldn't wait. So let's get that one opened up. As far as I know, this blue version is the fifth recolor of this car so far to date. Lots of details, big opening hood. And we're having some trouble focusing here. There we go. Really nice car, very heavy, big model. Doesn't fit too many display shelves. You basically have to display it all on its own because it's so long. All metal with rubber tires. And in the background, I've got the other four that I know of anyways in order of release. Got the nice glossy black one here. The Black Bandit version. And another Elvis version, also came out as a Hollywood hitch and toe, I believe. And then we've got the most recent hitch and toe here, one in kind of a pastel, orangey, barf color. But I really like the blue. Blue really sets this car off. Next, let's take a look at the pink matching trailer. Might as well for that other vehicle. Shasta Air Flight, brand new. There you go. I don't know why I keep these ones in the package. I just have a whole bunch of these because Greenlight has been putting out every different color and the rainbow of these things in these like just standalone trailer packages. But it would probably be nice to open it up. And it's got the white top uh, Cadillac here with the white top Shasta. Those two would really set each other off, and that would be great. But uh, for now. We'll leave that one in the package. They're not overly rare or anything. I just like the way the packaging sits with the air flight and all the rest. And let's move on into some M2s before we look at the awesome, awesome 
uh, Greenlight V-Dub Series 4 with some of those new transporter type trucks and some awesome tampos on the little bugs. But these M2s have been waiting their turn at the camera for a while so might as well get them opened up. Just a quick look at the packaging. These are all from the Wildcard Series 12 and there was two different paint variations for this of each of these models. I just chose to buy the one that I liked. Flat red uh, Ford Falcon Club Wagon and this turquoise black and white 60 VW delivery van. Another favorite casting of mine from M2 this time is the Chevy 210 station wagon. Really like those flames on it. There was a pink one with the flames as well. I almost bought it but I never did. M2 never fails to impress me with the build quality of their 164 scale models. Just tremendous details and construction quality on these all metal cars with rubber tires. Extremely detailed engines on these things and really one of my favorite favorite castings is this car in particular. Looks absolutely phenomenal with those flames all over it. Wonderful chrome tampa work done on the sides of it. Door handles right down to the little tiny door locks even. The little tumblers. And here's another cool piece. This, this van doesn't have any opening parts, but very sturdy design. Nice, authentically sized wheels for this vehicle. Some might call them too skinny, but they are to scale. And lots of pieces on these vehicles, even without the opening parts. Nice USA model of the Volkswagen van. Pretty cool uh, Volkswagen dentist. Denise, what does that say? Service. Sir, I can't read, it's too small. But really cool. Look, it's even got a separate engine lid there. So if you were to disassemble this vehicle, you'd probably reveal a little space for an engine. Nice rolling vehicles too. This one's got a bit of a wobble, but overall, nicely rolling vehicles for such detail. Make room for V-Dub. I'm going to go for my newest casting because I don't even have one of these yet. Look at that truck. Love the tampos on it. Limited edition. The Shell Oil Volkswagen Type 2 T2 Double Cab Pickup. Well, that's a mouthful. And of course the packaging on the back is going to be all the same. These are officially licensed by Volkswagen. So we'll open them up in turn. Just a quick look at them in their package. Look at that. Nice hippie van. Camper van. Westphalia Campmobile. And here's another one of those double cab pickups. Very cool. Really great casting. 68 Volkswagen Type 2 T2 bus with the roof rack. An interesting assortment of greens. And here's a little bug that is sure to fly off the shelves. The Golf Oil Volkswagen Beetle. Another Golf Oil vehicle. Between Greenlight and M2, my Golf Oil collection and Hot Wheels is just might as well be a display case in itself now. And here we have the 46 Volkswagen Beetle. Comes with a surfboard, an extra surfboard for your roof racks. Opening parts by the looks of it, front and back. Let's get those all out for you. This truly is the best way to enjoy your green light cars. Out of the package, not only do they take up less space, but look at all the details we get to see now. Where's that ramp truck? This car is so small, we might as well put it on a ramp just to have a look at it. There we go, put the ramps up. What exquisite details. As I predicted, opening parts front and back. Really nice wheels. And that removable surfboard in itself is so well detailed. Look how small this thing is. Quality. 
quite a nice little car very well detailed that's gonna go nicely on my little Volkswagen collection shelf I'm just I'm just baffled at how they get so much detail on these little all-metal cars might as well look at the next bug get back onto the ramp truck Cool little golf tampos all the way around, black bumpers, an authentic metal base, black rally inspired wheels. This one does not feature any opening parts, but it's a heavy little car. Very well built. And what are we going to look at next? Let's look at those brand new transporter trucks. These are my first two castings of this. I think they might have been released in another series, but I must have missed it. But this one is awesome. So much nice work on these vehicles and very heavy. Very heavy indeed. And here's a less dressed up version, more civilian I guess, or commercial. All metal as well. Not sure what these are limited to as production goes, but I would guess somewhere around 10,000 or so. And another hippie van. I got a nice little collection of these uh, these hippie inspired vans, which are really cool to look at. All those different colors and flowers on them. Flower power from the 60s. Very well built. The top does not fold down, but we already know this and that's fine. Here's the neon green one, or lime green, or whatever color green you would like to call it. It is bright. Individual little red jeweled tail lamps. Really a nice quality series from the V-Dub Series 4. And uh, those are going to look awesome on my display shelf. Get back here. So I hope you enjoyed this latest haul video. It's been a while since I've done a true haul video. Uh, they do tend to take me a little while because I do buy a lot of a lot of stuff. So anyways, if you're out looking for any of this stuff, as I always say, happy hunting.